Oh, 
let us pray. Dear Lord, we <clears throat> we thank you for the many blessings that you've given us. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given to that give us a day to come to your house to worship the Lord, spirit and truth. Very, very thankful for the ones that came out. Pray that everybody here gets a blessing if they're here for the right reason. Lord, we ask for your traveling mercy on, on, on the bakers as they uh, what, what stage of their tra uh, travel that they're in, whatever it is, that, that you would watch over them, Lord, keep them safe, keep them home safely. Uh, we pray, Lord, for <coughs> for Frank today as he brings the message that you sent to us. We did pray that you would give him encouragement and strength, and, and if he's scared, that you would pr uh, quench his fear, or just whatever he needs to. Whatever he needs, we pray that you would do it for him. We have to pray, Lord, for the, the, the sick folks about us. Uh, there's a ton of lost people about us. They don't know, or they don't want to know, or they know and they just ignore it. Whichever case, the last one being the worst, whatever case or whatever situation that they're in, they need you more than they need water. Now, it's hot and you need water in a bad way. You, uh, you go outside, you hour and a half, two hours outside, you are, if you haven't gotten your, some, some hydration, you're getting, we're getting weak, but we need Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. And we pray that you would, Lord, that you just send some people in here, because, and we pray that you would that you need to send us out there someplace, and that you would receive all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless. I couldn't figure out. I thought I was going to get on my way. I don't know. It's not time for that. But she was in there. She had a Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, if y'all are happy to be here on this gorgeous Lord's Day, say amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. amen. That's all right. We, you know what God said loud enough so they can hear us up in here. So, uh, and it is a gorgeous Lord's Day. Sunday's the best day of the week. We get to come to worship Jesus, sing His praises, and glorify His name. So, and hey, I know you don't like it, but I like this hot weather. Yeah, and it's going to be hot all this week. Isn't that great? Oh, yeah. No. What? I don't like My favorite kind of weather. My favorite kind of year is summer, hot weather. So, but anyway, uh, it's going to be in the hundreds all this week. So. So you listen, if you have songs you want us to sing, and you pick them out, and you let Dorothy and uh, somebody know, and we just make it go put it down, and it was nice for you. Okay. Hey, in Sunday school we had 16, so if you come early enough, you can have coffee and donuts, tacos, and all that good stuff. Uh, I know this morning Carl brought some fun dulce, so. Mm -hmm. Best stuff there is. So we have a fourth concern. If you know someone who's ill, having problems for whatever reason, we put their name on the board and just continue to pray for them each and every day. I, I put a lady up there. Her name is Mary Montez. She's the sister-in-law of one of my daughter's friends. So her cancer has come back. So we need to pray not only for Mary but all of those on the board. Up there. Oh, and by the way, ladies, if you missed Friday, you missed a good time. So, you missed a good time. So, uh, let's see what. Oh, Wednesday at 6.30 is the evening service. And, oh, no, it's a uh, business meeting, right? Bible study business meeting. Okay. And then Sunday evening at 6.30, we'll get this.
Sunday evening at 6 30 is uh, the evening uh, services, so y'all all come to that one. Is anybody having a birthday? Anybody getting any younger? No? Oh, by the way, Bill has a birthday next month on the 22nd of August. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and my family's there. So. Okay, uh, how about anniversaries? What is yours? Oh, I think birthday. he's got an anniversary. Okay, okay. Well, come on, Bert. Come on, Bert. Uh -huh. I love you guys. Been married. Forty-four. Hey, you're catching up with me. Good. Oh, okay.
all these things in the blessed and precious holy name. Lord Jesus, the Holy God. Amen. Amen. Well, we had a song that we were going to do for you this morning. 
And uh, the little boy said, don't do it. I want you to do this. So when that little boy speaks, he does listen. So we're going to do this song instead. A friend of mine that's up in heaven right now, Brother Don Staffy, he always used to say that when he gets to heaven, this is the first song he wants to hear. Amazing grace, how sweet a sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. But now I have seen all this grace that has my heart to fear and grace and the fears really.
Morning, Judge. Morning. It's always a privilege to be able to stand in the pulpit and bring the word of God to you. And uh, I hope I'll be able to keep your attention this morning. And uh, I haven't been in the pulpit for a few years now, but uh, it is no stranger to me that uh, I have been able to bring the word of God, to bring the message. This morning we'll be in the Old Testament. We we'll have two readings. The first, if you can open your Bible to Exodus chapter 20. And while you're doing that, I'll go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this day. We thank you, Lord, that you can use me to bring the message to the brothers and sisters, and we just pray, Lord, that you will guide me and lead me as I go forward with this message. In Jesus' name. We are going to talk about uh, a very familiar subject that most Christians and non-Christians alike have used in either a negative or a positive way. The non-Christians usually use the message that I'm about to bring to you to degrade and to point a finger at the Christians and say this is the way you live. And uh, in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 17, I read, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And uh, for our second reading, we'll turn to Second Samuel. Second Samuel and chapter 11. Now this is a story that uh, I said before. It's very familiar. It's a story about King David. When he stepped out of line, Lord. It's a story about David and Bathsheba. I'm pretty sure that most of you have heard that story and probably know it by heart already. It's been around for quite a while and uh, we'll uh, just get right in there. Now I want to just uh, let you know what this word covet means. Covet means to want something with a deep desire that you will do whatever it takes to get it. And that is what happened with David. Now let's uh, let's uh, read from 2 Samuel chapter 11 and verse 1. It says. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servant with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. Now let's take a look at that verse here. Now there are some things that we have to, that jumps right out of, out of us. As we know from reading the Bible that 
every time that Israel went to war, King David was always with his army. He was there fighting alongside his army, leading them into battle. But what happened to, at this time? When, when King David army was out fighting, what did David do? David, first of all, he did not go. He sent Joab. Joab was the commander of his forces. So he sent Joab. That was the first thing he did. The next thing he did, that David, verse 11, David tarried still at Jerusalem. So he sent his army out, and Joab took charge of leading the battle, but David stayed back at home. Verse 2, And it came to pass in an even tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was beautiful to look upon. Verse 3, And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elaine, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? That was a signal to David right there. You see, David was a man after God's own heart. He knew the word of God. He knew the Ten Commandments. He was chosen on occasion to take the Ark of the Covenant up into the house when it was lost to the to the uh, Hittite, not the Hittites, the, the, the Get that in a minute. But the ark was taken, was captured by the Philistines. Those are the ones. And David brought that ark back up into the house of God. So in order to handle the ark of God, you had to be right with the Lord. We read, we read many times before Aaron, the high priest, went into the uh, temple to pray for the people. He had to pray for himself first before going into the ark. So David was a man after God's own heart. He was chosen by God to be the ruler of Israel. David was a, was a, a shepherd boy uh, working with sheep when the Lord sent the prophet to bring him out to anoint him to be king over his people, Israel. So what happened here now in our uh, in, in verse 3, David sent an inquiry after the woman he saw washing herself, and she, her name was Bathsheba. That's where we always hear the story, David and Bathsheba. So now, the first thing here is that I read verse 3 again, and David sent an inquiry after the woman, and one said, See, that's something we have to take into consideration. Too many times when we ourselves fall to uh, temptations, there is always someone there to remind us. Our conscience reminds us that something is wrong. We tend to look to the left and look to the right. Sometimes we look behind us. But we always forget to look up. Now David, David here, uh, and one said, is not this Bathsheba the daughter of? This was a reminder to David. Because the Bible told us in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it said, no temptation has overtaken you, but such that is common to man. God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond that which you are able. For with the temptation, he will provide a way of escape also that you may be able to endure it. You see, someone was here to remind David when he inquired, who is, it, who, who is that woman? So someone said, isn't that Bathsheba, the wife? Now, David, no, that was one of the Ten Commandments. But he went and inquired after the woman. And in verse uh, 4, and David sent messenger and took her, and she came unto him, 
and he lay with her. And for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto the house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David, said, I am with child. Now, as soon as David got that message from Bathsheba, that she was the child, she was pregnant, David. Now she is the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Now we'll know, learn a little more about Uriah uh, as we go along. But what happened now is that David started making plans how he would cover his cracks. So when he, when we do wrong, all of us do wrong, but the Bible says all have sinned. So it may not be at the level as to what we read in here from David, the sin of adultery, but what happened is that we have our own little uh, secrets that we have out and keep carrying around uh, for however long it may be. So what happened now is that David started a plan to hide the sin. He wanted to cover it up. So in verse 7, he said, no, in verse 6, he said, and David sent to Joab, saying, send me Uriah the Hittite, and Joab sent Uriah to David. Now, we have a lot of grounds to cover here to get the story all the way out. We have to go into uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11 and chapter 12. So I will not have time, we will not have time to read the both chapters. So I will tell you some of the stories and then we'll read some pertinent uh, passages. So what happened now, David sent and told Joab, send me Uriah, send him home. So David had a plan in his head now. So we will see what this plan was as we go along. And, and when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house, and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. So David told Uriah, Go on down to your house. Just go to your house, and you just came from the, uh, from the war on uh, the front lines, and you go on down to your house, and you wash yourself, and David sent food and so on down, so he can have a good time at his house. Now David had a plan, which we would get there. But you, but, verse 9, but Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. You see now, David had a plan that Uriah would go to the house. He already know and had a, got the message that Bathsheba was pregnant. So now, David had a plan to let Uriah go down to his house. So after Bathsheba had the baby, Everybody would think that, oh, they're celebrating that Achiba and Uriah had the baby. But Uriah did not go down to his house. He stayed at the king's house and slept with the servant. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down to his house, David asked him, in verse 10. Why then didn't thou go down unto thy house? You see, because of course, Uriah came back from the front lines, from the battle, and he would go down to his house and he would be with his wife, and uh, the plan of David was that everybody would think that, well, Uriah was there, so that's his baby. So Uriah, being an honorable man, did not go down. And David said to inquire after the woman. Now, now hold on here. I am uh, verse uh, verse nine. 
But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants, and we read that already. And when they had told David, say, Uriah went not down unto his house. Uh, we read that also. Verse 11, And Uriah said unto David, The ark of Israel and Judah abides in tents and night. Lord Joab and the servant, servant of my Lord are encamped in the open field. Shall I, shall I go down to my house and eat and drink and lie with my wife as thou livest and as thy soul liveth? I will not do the same. See, Uriah was a, an honorable man. He's, he is thinking now that all my, the king's army are there fighting a war. Why should I come home and go and enjoy the pleasure of my home and be with my wife and eat and be married? So he said, no, he's not going to do that. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him and made him drunk. And at evening he went out to lie in his bed, and the servants of his Lord went not down to his house. You see, that's the second night. David treated, had a, 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 a little party or whatever you may want to call it for Uriah, he eat and drink and got drunk and still did not go down to his house. So he, he paid a while. If under normal circumstances, Uriah did not go down the house. Well, let me try and get him drunk. So he got him drunk and said, Uriah did not go down the house. And in 14, and it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hands of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, this was a death sentence of Uriah. David wrote a letter, gave it to Uriah and sent him to go back to the front lines go out and see Joab and give him this letter. But in that letter, this is what you wrote. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the front of the hardest battle and retire from him, and he may be smitten and die. You see, it was the, his death sentence, but Uriah, being an honorable man that he was, he did not open the letter, he never knew what was in the letter. But that was his death sentence, written by the hand of David, sent to Joab, saying, put Uriah where the fighting is very fierce. And after the fighting gets very fierce, you pull back all your men and leave Uriah alone in the front line. I mean, that was terrible for the king. But that's what, it, that's what happened with, uh, with this letter. And Joab followed the instruction of the king, put Uriah in the front where the battle was fierce, and then pulled all the men back and left Uriah there alone. So Uriah now got killed. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that Uriah, that he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew that brave fighting men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servant of David. And Uriah, the Hittite, died also. So Uriah was killed by the hands of David. So, so in verse 20, and if so be the kings Oh, let me uh, remind you. Well, uh, actually, then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war and charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matter of the war unto the king, and if so be the king, that the king's wrath arises, and we say unto thee, Wherefore approach ye so nigh unto the city where we fight? David was saying, why did you go so close to the city? You see, David is planning and making excuses for everything that happened. But he knew all the war activities and putting Uriah in the front was his plan. But now he is playing that he didn't know and asked him, well, why did you go so close to the war? And then he said, 
thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So David knows that Uriah the Hittite was, was dead. So So then, they went on. then David said unto the messenger, who brought the message to David from the front line, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, because Joab knows that he got the letter to have uh, uh, Joab got the letter from David to have Uriah put in the front line. So, he was guilty, so now he's trying to let Joab don't feel guilty about what he did, okay? So, and when the wife of Uriah the Hittite heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. 